The final conflict? Of course I remember it. How could anyone forget that wild ride? It was us against the Vexens, or whatever they actually call themselves. You know those massive, purple-skinned brutes who can leap off planets and punch stuff into orbit? They'd crossed into our territory again, strutting through a handful of remote settlements, torching what they couldn't loot, and making life a living hell for any pre-FTL civilizations they encountered along the way. We retaliated, naturally, struck back hard with blockades, devoting entire fleets to halting their progress while we evacuated our people, locking down the whole sector and making Planetfall a nightmare for them. It was hilarious watching a couple of them try to break out of zero-point energy trap by punching it. Well, until it actually worked, that is. Still, our tech gurus kept dreaming up more and more creative ways to deal with them, and eventually we reached a stalemate. Sure, there were skirmishes, like the time we unleashed a swarm of 50 million nanobots on their primary trade hub, wrecking their comms array to cut them off even more. Or that time we transformed the atmosphere of an abandoned colony from gas to liquid, then dispatched submersibles to anchor them to the newly formed seabeds with magnetic shackles. Worked like a charm, that one. Big fella was stuck down there for a whole month before he broke free. Anyway, we were just passing by this insignificant backwater world with some tiny, primitive species. Didn't give them much thought, considering they barely made it out of their own star system. I mean, talk about backward. They used visual and auditory cues for long-range communication. And they were a genetic disaster. Two eyes, no infrared perception, no ability to sense magnetic fields, limited atmospheric adaptability, and basically plagued by illnesses that could wipe them out in a matter of days. If anything, I think the recon teams felt sorry for them and just left them out of the initial reports. Can't fault them, especially when not one, but seven Vexens crashed on their homeworld, some little blue marble three planets away from the sun. We figured they'd ravage the place and come gunning for us within a few months. And you know how war gets, right? Comms flying back and forth, assets rerouted to higher priority zones, plenty of logistical mayhem. That's where I came in, redirecting the heavy artillery from one battlefield to the next. I saw the alert about the Seven touching down on the Eastern Front and downgraded it all the way to green status. I mean, who gives a damn about one distant alien world when there are 2,000 more to clear with our own kind on them? I stuck the memo on the wall, kind of in the middle as a gag. But a month passed and nothing happened with it. I sort of brushed it off, assuming maybe the Vexens were enjoying themselves smashing things. But a month turned into two, then four, then half a year went by, and the longer it dragged on, the more the brass in the division were asking, what's keeping them there? We dispatched a recon squad to investigate. Standard scout unit of 40,000 soldiers in 60 scout vessels, yours truly included, but not without intense repeated objection. I mean, what if I stepped in some native life form's guts? When we finally scanned the planet from outside the system, we got those images of the Vexens grinning. I mean, here were these virtually unkillable, eternally enraged creatures, capable of obliterating the entire world in a matter of days just for looking at them funny, and they were just chilling out, happy as a grazing herd under the starlight. We'd never witnessed anything like it. Command was stumped, but at the same time insisted we uncover what was going on. They were sure we could use something about the planet to subdue them. Something in the air, the water, the chemical composition of the flora or fauna. Something to turn the tide and eliminate the vexed menace once and for all. We landed immediately. Not all of us, just a small contingent. Maybe three or four thousand. First thing we noticed was the stench, obviously. Cut through all of us, but that's why we had air filters. My CO made certain we all had them so we could tolerate the low oxygen levels on the surface. But the odor still seeped through a little. But when we tried to communicate with the natives, they couldn't even detect us. Took us a few days to grasp that they couldn't perceive pheromone output or telepathic projection worth a damn. One of the grunts, can't recall his name, proposed we try something really archaic, spoken language. That left everyone revolted, and we drew straws to decide who would do it. In the end, my CO lost in a totally legit 100% above-board game of chance with standard-issue dice. Scout's honor. He makes a few inquiries, but the blasted aliens speak so quietly he can barely make out what they're saying. 
so he yanks off his helmet to hear them better and just locks up. I mean, he freezes completely, and we think there's some sort of paralytic vapor in the atmosphere that the sensors can't pick up. But after ten minutes of just standing there, he chuckles and plops down in the grass, a goofy grin spreading across his face just like the Vexen's. We force the helmet back on his head, and he finally snaps out of it. He's a jittery mess and commands us all back up to the ships, just before he passes out, trembling like some kind of drug fiend on a bender. He's in the infirmary for nearly a week and we declare a sector-wide lockdown until he can regain consciousness. Man, we were, and excuse me for saying this, crapping ourselves trying to figure out what in the hell happened. When he finally does come to, he rings up command and instructs them to duplicate any and all of their audio transmissions from the surface and to broadcast them live to every planet the Vexens are occupying. Only catch is, he advises that nobody listen to them or else they'll likely become comatose or worse. Command panics and rejoices at the same time, but even they can't fully commit to a strategy without some kind of clue as to what we're actually going to do to the poor bastards. So they pick this one fleet to test it out on first, just for a day. They transmit, and for a full day, the entire fleet goes completely unproductive. I mean, zero activity, zilch. It was unsettling, sure, but what was more disturbing was when they cut the transmission. I mean, the fleet erupted into pandemonium. Mind-numbing, stomach-churning pandemonium. I mean, I'd witnessed the slaughter at Rigel 7, and even I lost my lunch after seeing this carnage. We get the eggheads over to the fleet in record time. They start analyzing samples of the population's neural chemistry, and it's screwed up worse than a dark matter addict on a fresh bender. It takes them three days just to pinpoint which receptor clusters are impacted by the exposure. Two months go by, and they send us a preliminary report. A lot of technical gibberish, some terms I was certain they made up on the fly. But as far as they can tell, the transmissions triggered some kind of bizarre, cyclical hormone release we aren't evolved for, and it hits instantly upon exposure. What little we know of actual vex in biology indicates they're experiencing something similar but the eggheads are at a total loss as to how the natives developed a resistance to it. But the war is going nowhere fast, and the top brass want to seize any advantage we can, so we transmit this audio relay systematically across a secured frequency to every world the Vexens are on, making sure none of our people are there first. And just like that, the war is over. The Vexens eventually built up a slight resistance to the transmissions, enough to maintain basic bodily function and engage in simple communication. But they have no appetite for war anymore. It's gone completely and utterly. It's as if the Vexens just went extinct in this peaceful race of giant crop farmers sprang up across the known galaxy. But that fleet I mentioned, it's still messed up. Every single member of the fleet, all 60 million, recalls that day with perfect clarity. Our CO even got reassigned there when his own judgment got him booted out of the service. But like with any drug epidemic, we set up social services to combat the problem. We set up government subsidies to help them live as normal a life as they can manage. We cordoned off the sectors, redistributing their resources and put them into rehab centers based on exposure levels. But they still go in for treatment, I mean today, and we doubt they'll ever fully reintegrate into the empire. Newborns are acting strange, like disturbingly strange. And even now, a decade later, there are civilians who break down and go insane, remembering the day the harmony ended. I still have no idea what this harmony the Terrans created is, but I'll be damned if I ever go back to Earth and find out. That stuff gives me nightmares just thinking about it. It's wild to think about, isn't it? I mean, here we were, two advanced civilizations locked in this epic struggle for dominance, and it all comes down to some primitive species stumbling upon a quirk of biology that neither of us could have predicted. It's like the universe just decided to throw a curveball and see how we'd handle it. But that's the thing about war, isn't it? You never know what's going to tip the scales. Could be some brilliant strategic maneuver, could be a new piece of tech that changes the game, or it could be something as simple and unexpected as a little bit of alien music. I guess in the end, it just goes to show that no matter how advanced we think we are, there's always going to be something out there that can throw us for a loop. And maybe that's not such a bad thing keeps us on our toes, you know? But man, I tell you what, I've seen a lot of things in my time, but nothing quite compares to the sight of those big, 
bad vexens just sitting there with those dopey grins on their faces. It's an image that'll stick with me for the rest of my days. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll figure out just what it was about that Terran Harmony that had such a profound effect on us all. But until then, I think I'll just be content to steer clear of that little blue planet and all the mysteries it holds. Some things, I reckon, are just better left unknown.